now, right now, is McIntyre in the morning with Doug McIntyre and Terry Ray Elmer. Seven oh six Talk Radio seven ninety K A B C. As T Ray was just telling you, the controversial Millennium uh, Project that was uh, proposed for is proposed for Hollywood to build these giant twin uh, towers uh, right near the Capitol Records building. Well, it's uh, it's been in the crosshairs for uh, for months and months and months. Uh, not only because of the uh, the way it could change the character of the neighborhood, but also because of the seismic risk of building near or on an active earthquake fault. And now, California State Geologist has concluded that an active earthquake fault is in fact underneath the proposed massive skyscraper project. To talk to us about it is an attorney who represents groups that have opposed the Millennium Project from day one. We've spoken to him a number of times, and it's a pleasure to welcome back to the show Robert Silverstein. Robert, how are you? Good. Thank you. Good morning. Well, this is what you've been saying all along. Well, what the final state map that was issued yesterday does is vindicate what we have been saying and what every reputable scientist has been saying, which is that the active Hollywood fault cuts right through the heart of the proposed Millennium Hollywood Skyscrapers project. Now, this presents an enormous problem for Mayor Garcetti and for City Councilman Mitchell Farrell specifically, because... Mayor Garcetti, when he was on the L.A. City Council, represented the Hollywood District. He was one of the chief uh, proponents of this project and has supported it, as has Mitch Farrell. But uh, he also appointed uh, Dr. Lucy Jones of Caltech as L.A.'s first earthquake czar. And, Robert, I know you were in the room when we did our, uh, our, our town hall meeting on earthquakes out at Caltech a couple months back which we broadcast live here at KBC, and Lucy Jones said you cannot build on an active earthquake fault because we have no science on how to engineer a building to survive an earthquake that sits directly atop an earthquake fault. So if this is the case, Mayor Garcetti's own appointee, uh, 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 an undisputed world authority on earthquakes, it has issued a statement that doesn't really leave any wiggle room, and now the state geologist has confirmed that the fault is, in fact, there. It's going to be interesting to see how Garcetti and O'Farrell try to avoid the reality here. Uh, I've seen statements in the press where especially O'Farrell is already trying to circle the wagons around his developer friends uh, and ignoring the science, ignoring the public health safety risks. Um, but you're right. Lucy Jones at that event at Caltech said to me after the meeting, of course the earthquake fault runs through that site. Every reputable scientist knew it. And then I came on the radio the next day, and I broke that news for you that Mayor Garcetti's own earthquake czar had confirmed what everyone knew. Yesterday, when the state geologist issued the final map, that was based on an amazing amount of data and research and information. Uh, and their study is thorough, and they are confident. And what we need to hear now from Mayor Garcetti and Councilman O'Farrell is that they are going to rescind these project approvals because they never should have been approved to begin with. Well, that's certainly uh, a big turnaround. And, of course, these projects, uh, they're very, very lucrative projects. There's a couple of billion dollars on the table, and that rarely loses in Los Angeles or any place else, by the way, not just Los Angeles. But we have a unique problem because we, are, we have built a, a major city on an area that's crisscrossed with earthquake faults, some we know about and many we don't know about. Uh, but, but again, to, to pour a foundation, to build a foundation right in the middle of a seismic fault is to play uh, Russian roulette with the uh, tenants' lives. What, what I have heard multiple times from um, statements made by California State Geologist Dr. John Parrish is that no amount of engineering of a building can withstand the shearing forces of being on top of an earthquake fault when it ruptures. And the Hollywood earthquake fault is a magnitude 7.0 fault. It is what's called a thrust fault. Uh, and when it goes, if a building, much less a skyscraper, is on top of it, there will be catastrophic failure and catastrophic loss of life. 
We're talking with Robert Silverstein. He's the attorney uh, opposed to the Millennium Project and their website, by the way, is StopTheMillenniumHollywood.com. StopTheMillenniumHollywood.com. Let me ask you this question, because we need to grow as a city. If we don't build it, they still come. And we haven't built in a lot of ways. We haven't kept up with housing needs, for instance, and, and we can see what's happening to rents and uh, prices of homes. It's really pricing the middle class and the working poor right out of the city. And uh, and on top of that, just demographically, the population is going to go up, and we need uh, business and industry to come here and to construction. If somebody wants to invest in Hollywood, that's a great thing. It's jobs, and it's all that's good. But we have to – how do we do that given – uh, objections for preservationists or just people who are flat out NIMBYs or are now legitimate safety concerns over earthquake faults? Well, I, I have to question a little bit the assumption that we're pricing the working poor out of the city. The kinds of projects that Garcetti has supported have resulted in the elimination of existing low income housing, and the buildings that have taken their place typically are extremely high rent units for example i just won a trial uh, last month against the la city council over the old spaghetti factory building in hollywood where the developer did an illegal midnight demolition of a 1924 structure violated city law and garcetti for three years never made a peep never lifted a finger and allowed that building to be built the units that are in that building are going for about $2,000 a month for a, a small one-bedroom. So the idea that we're pricing the working poor out of the city, I actually think it's Garcetti's policies that have made that worse. But in terms of development, we support good development, but under nobody's definition is putting a skyscraper on top of an earthquake fault good development. Yeah, I mean, and normally uh, I'm very reluctant because we're we're world famous for being hostile towards uh, business in the city of Los Angeles, even though you correctly point out that if you are a well-connected, deep-pocketed developer, the city is run for your benefit. The benefit of developers, public employee unions, and the illegal alien lobby. That's pretty much the power structure of, uh, of the city of Los Angeles, and small to mid-sized business and homeowners are cannon fodder. But... Uh, I I, t I totally agree. You know, the, the homeowners that I represent, the hundreds of thousands of people across the more than 40 community groups that I represent, feel completely disenfranchised by Councilman O'Farrell and by Mayor Garcetti. Now, it's, uh, it's going to have to come around because the middle class is, uh, is the strength of the nation. It really is, both economically and politically. And a city of just rich and just poor is a third world model, and it's not the model that we want to uh, go forward with. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it, Robert. We'll talk to you again, undoubtedly. Thank you very much. Okay, and just.